Hope Fest Lady here. It's 2020 and we are quarantined. However, I happen to bring home this big eight foot tall cuckoo clock, which we use for our Oktoberfest. I was going to repair it, kind of fit it in between things. Little did I know we would be uh, social isolating at home, quarantining, and I have plenty of time. The really neat thing is that I've been learning how to do full wood graining and all sorts of shadows that I've been using and it's been really fun. I hope you'll enjoy this video of the transformation of our cuckoo clock. This is our cuckoo clock in 2013. After 7 Oktoberfest, it needed a facelift. The 2020 quarantine gave me plenty of time to add some little details. And one of the details was bright red shutters with three-dimensional hearts, dots, and hardware. The transformation of the door started with one quick coat of green craft paint on the sides and top of the door. Then I drew a half circle on the top of the door, which will have wooden window paint. After the green paint's all dry, time for a second coat of green paint on the edges of the door. I can't wait to add the wood grains. It will look so awesome. But before I can do that, I have to add painter's tape, carefully overlapping one-inch strips all around the corners. I'm going to paint a strip of green paint on the edge and then if there's bleeding under the tape it'll match the color under the tape. If you don't take the time to do this you will not get a nice crisp edge. I use tropical fruit and nice peachy color for all the background color on all the areas that'll have a faux wood grain. I drew in lines and taped the panels and windows. I painted one coat of black craft paint on the top half of the door where the windows will be. Once the black was dry, I drew in and taped the window panes carefully. I mixed four parts of faux glaze with one part of paint, the paint color I used with earth fired red. I applied the glaze mixture to the two horizontal panels of the door. Seeing this wood color pop is really satisfying. I added the simulated wood grains by pouncing with a dry paintbrush. After the first coat of glaze is completely dry, then I added a second coat of glaze. I taped off the vertical panels and then I applied the first coat of glaze to two select areas. Then I once again pounced the texture in with a dry paintbrush. While the bottom half of the door was drying, I painted tropical fruit base coat on the window panes on the top half of the door. After the two vertical panels were dry, I removed the tape. Then I taped over the edges of the dry panels to get ready to paint the next vertical sections. I applied one coat of glaze to the three large panels, and, and then I pounced again with the dry brush to create the uh, wood texture. After that was dry, I covered the areas that needed to be highlighted with tape at a 45 degree angle at the corners. After a second coat of glaze, more pouncing with a dry brush. Now that the first coat of glaze on the window panes is dry, time to tape the highlighted areas. The tape will cover the highlighted lighter areas here, so they'll only have one coat of glaze. It takes some real patience to get this right. Drum roll, please. This is so awesome. I love this. After all the planning, measuring, sketching, painting, and waiting, I can't tell you how satisfying it is to look at your finished product. The lightest strips had one coat of glaze and the darkest had three coats and you can see that it gives a lot of depth and dimension to the doors. I used this rubber wood graining tool to create real looking wood texture over the first coat of a glaze mixture. I did this on the flower boxes with the glaze mixture and the area below the flower box. I followed up with a second coat of glaze then adding texture with a whisk broom. I drew in window frames and then taped off the window frames and flowers before applying glaze around them. So I added glaze, then wood grains, and then a second coat of glaze. I painted trim and shadows to make the trim really pop out. I googled images of geraniums and flower boxes and painted two flower boxes full of geranium. And the front door had a heart-shaped wreath. I googled images of edelweiss and lilies for my welcome sign. Now it's time to start on the top half. Our poor cuckoo bird has been repeatedly damaged. And his door will remain closed. And after a good sanding, our sassy new bird. Now for repairs, gluing, sanding, and priming. With a nice clean board, it's time to draw in the beams, the shelf, and the shadows. The newly painted bird gets inserted in the opening and taped off before I start painting. After painting all of the beams dark brown, it's time for the great reveal, and I do love tearing off the tape. It is so fun. 
You never know until you're actually taking the tape off how everything turned out. So it's kind of a mm, exciting moment because you might have a lot of touch-ups to do and other times it works great. The wood I have is pretty lumpy bumpy and so there's a lot of spots that kind of bled through even with all the precautions I took. One of my favorite parts of this is revealing those shelf brackets. They really look awesome when they stick right out. I mean, it feels like they're really sticking out away from the, the cuckoo clock, and that was a really satisfying moment. Tape covers the shelf, the brackets, and the timbers. And then comes more glaze and wood graining. And then I taped off the horizontal areas for the plank shadows. Pulling off, removing that tape is the most glorious part of the project. I love this part, really I do. Wow, I love how the brackets just jump out. I love it. And here's a cuckoo bird in his window. Then I googled images of cuckoo clocks and shingles. Tape marks the edges and then I paint the first coat of black paint. After the first coat dries, I do a second coat of black paint, and when that is dry, I trace some cylinders to make scallops along the edge. After painting the off-white scallops and adding gray shadows, then I hit it with the first coat of glaze. I do with the shingles one at a time. I use the wood graining tool here, and after the wood graining tool, I kind of hit it with the brush to soften the design with the dry brush and then a second coat of glaze and I have to wait until it's dry and then removing tape from the top bottom edge. Wow, this is really exciting. And then removing tape from the top of the shingles and then they're ready to glaze too. I'm going to do the top row of shingles and then, whoa, another beautiful and exciting moment as I remove the tape. And the last of the tape comes off and now I'm going to create a bracket for the clock. The bracket will go here, and the clock's going to be removable. My son Patrick is creating a bracket. Here he is, cutting strips of sheet metal, and then he marks the center of the ends before he folds them lengthwise. He uses a tool called a brake to bend the sheet metal exactly 90 degrees. Next, he uses a shrinker to shorten one side, creating a curved bracket. This tool crimps the metal on one side creating a smooth gradual curve and then he takes it and tests it against the clock to see if it's curved enough almost perfect just a few more shrinks needed when the curved pieces are just perfect he attaches the bracket to a scrap piece of wood he drills holes in the side of the bracket for the threaded nut rivets which will go in there the threaded nut rivets will add threads to the brackets the screw will hold the clock to the bracket he uses a nut cert to insert the rivets into the bracket and then drills holes in the edge of the clock. And then he, uses, then he uses a fusion welder to fuse the bracket pieces together into one round piece. The clock's attached to the scrap piece of wood. Thank you, Patrick, for sharing your time, your tools, and your talent. Now I'm attaching bracket to the real cookie clock. With the bracket installed, now it's just four screws in and the clock is attached to the front of the cuckoo clock. The front of the clock is done and ready for Oktoberfest. I'm creating a faux stained glass window behind the cuckoo bird's opening starting with a sketch and then I painted the most challenging part first and then a border around the window and layer by layer I add plants, cobblestones, trees, sky and other details and the stained glass window will go on the inside of the cuckoo clock. Time to work on sketches for the little smoker, Swiss Bell, and Stein that will go on a shelf below the stained glass window. Here I am adding color to my little smoker, adding shadows behind my smoker, Swiss Bell, and mug to make them have dimension and depth. I'm putting tape all around the shelf, and then around the brackets. I'll stain the brackets first, remove the tape, and do the shelf afterwards. I'm covering the shelf and the brackets with tape before adding shadows below. Once the shadows are done, 
the shelf really has a lot of depth. I painted faux wood grain beams all around the edges and then taped off the beams and trim before adding shadows to the underside. Removing the tape is always one of my favorite parts. The tape comes off after the dimensional shadows are added. I love this part. I taped again and then added green paint for the beams. When that was dry, I added more tape and then painted dark green for shadows. I added dark tones where the wood creates shadows on all the corners and intersections. Finally, to create a stone entry to the cuckoo clock, I used faux glaze and gray, brown, and black paint to create dimensional stones. Building the color with several layers, I left space for the grout in between, and then I came through and made shadows to make the grout look like it was kind of deep. And added some faux wear and tear to age them a bit. I coated it with several layers of clear polyurethane. And the update from the old cuckoo clock to the new cuckoo clock is completed. And this is the back side, the part the kids see before they dance out onto the dance floor. I hope you enjoyed watching this video on the transformation of our cuckoo clock. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Give me a thumbs up that you like the video. But so until next time, Marilyn Hall signing out as Ofest Lady.